Hey everyone, Craig here. Thank you so much for checking out my channel so far. The video I put up last week has exploded. It shows how excited people are for AI, as well as uh, a minority maybe a little bit scared of change. So I thought this video, it would be useful to go through all of the comments and answer any questions. That way we can get a discussion going around AI. I can answer any questions you might have in terms of prompts, uh, the best sites to use and all that kind of thing. All right, so without further ado, let's jump into the comments. Okay, so we're gonna scroll through the comments and answer the ones that are questions and that we can get a discussion going around. So the secret kicks off and says, I don't even know how to enter when you were typing in mid journey. Um, and I didn't explain that. So I might have to create another video of prompts and a, a kind of a bit beginner's guide to mid journey. But essentially mid journey is a discord server. So if you don't know what a discord server is, I suggest going on Google and YouTube and, and having a look. Um, and also going on to Discord, of course, and signing up for an account. The way it works is it's basically like, like a forum. Um, you get invited to the Mid Journey Discord. And then once in there, there's channels within the, the Mid Journey Discord um, that are kind of public in general. But you can message directly to a Mid Journey bot. And it's kind of like a DM where that's where you put your your prompts in, and that's the one-on-one -on -one interface that you're probably looking for. Lulu says that this is so sad for real artists. So, so as I've put there, real artists will always have a need. Um, I personally think the people using Midjourney are mostly, most likely the people who are using stock imagery and the people who are using sites where, you know, you might download 40 coloring pages and then have to take them and modify them somehow. So I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing for real artists. I, th I more think like it's a good thing for publishers who don't have access to pay real artists. Scrolling through, let's see what else is here. Uh, apologies if I butcher your name, Dinoza. I hope that was okay. Uh, great video, subscribe, thank you very much. By the way, did these books actually sell? So I've replied there, I'm very transparent uh, with, with my earnings, with what's selling. I th think I've made about 10 coloring books with AI so far, so not that many, but my best performing one, um, it only launched at the end of November, and it's already sold 115 copies, which is very strong. And if I can create one a day, one every two days, let's say a couple of, a couple of week around other things, then, you know, the sky's the limit in terms of if I, can, if I can find the niches, if I can find the books that sell a hundred units every, every, every couple of months. Um, so yes, they sell, but some of them might not sell if they're not in a niche. Uh, Kenneth says, does mid journey have a private mode? Um, if everybody can use and see the images generated, it's very bad. So yes, mid journey does have a private mode, but you have to pay more for it. So it depends how, kind of ring fence you want to be about your your work uh, the prompts that have created the images on mid journey personally i see it as a bit of like mid journeys making me images from what already exists out there so i don't really see a need to ring fence it and stop other people using my content um especially when it comes to to the interiors of books because i can create 40 say uh insect images if someone wants to find me find those images and make an insect coloring book themselves one um they're breaking copyright because they're copyrighted to me and to mid journey and two um i believe that with my expertise with with covers with amazon ads um all of that on top of the content creation i think that helps you rise to the top so it's always about creating a good product first. Um, so that's why I'm not really worried that much about ring fencing my products. Great video. Could you share some prompts for mid-journey? I will do. I'll, I'll do a video on prompts. Um, let me know in the comments if you want to see it for coloring books, for covers, illustrations. You know, let me know what you want to see in the comments and I'll do a video on that. 
There's a comment here saying, I was just reading a thread by an artist about the ethical and copyright problems with AI. Do you have any comments? Um, so it's very much a gray area at the moment. I think now is a good time to utilize mid journey because you're protected by the terms and conditions and you're given shared copyright as long as you're on the premium package. So for me, it feels like now is the perfect time to get on board with creating content via mid journey, but that may change in six months to twelve months time. So I think leg legally wise, I think it's fine to do for the moment, who knows in the future. And ethically wise, I think, as I kind of said before, I don't think it's taking people's content and using it without permission. It's, it's, it's using someone's content as inspiration to create something new, which is basically what Mid Journey does. In terms of permissions, I think that then comes down to Mid Journey and uh, legislations and all of that. So I'll stay outside of, I'll stay out of that part of it, and I'll just focus on my prompts my content and making sure that whatever I put out there is of a good enough quality and it's not copyrighted. Uh, Judy asks, thanks for the video, what rule of thumb are you using to decide if a niche is saturated? So there's several tools out there. I mentioned Book, Book Bolt. I use Publisher Rocket. Um, they're both paid um, pieces of software, but you can basically go into the Amazon search bar uh, and there's different ways of going about it, but if you search for a term, you can see the results on the side. So it might say have thousands of results. So you basically want something that doesn't have thousands of results. Um, that might start by going and searching for insect coloring book, and then you might have thousands of results. So you, you niche down further and you say butterfly coloring books, and then it still might be thousands. So you go butterfly coloring books for kids. And then you start niching down and getting your sub niches. Um, the issue without, it's a lot easier when you pay for a product to help you with that because it can be quite manual work. And especially with Publisher Rocket, it gives you the search volumes as well. So I could put in Publisher Rocket, um, I want to know how many people are searching for insect coloring books for kids. And it will give me um, how many people are searching for it, the amount of competitors, yeah, highly recommended product. Uh, Chariots asks, is there an alternative to Mid Journey that does coloring pages well? So there are just tons of text to image AI products out there. And even Canva, who many of you might use uh, to create your covers, they're even, they've, they've even, sorry, they've even launched their own version of, of AI. So it, it's just going to trickle down into pretty much every image software and i wouldn't be surprised in the future even if amazon within their cover creator had some element of ai within it so i truly think it's something that we lean into and let's keep an eye on the legality things the legislations the copyrights but yeah i think let's get on board it's exciting it's fun it's very new still um and there's exciting opportunities to be had with creating unique content uh, Robert says, uh, he asked a question around punctuation. So I've found with my prompts in Mid Journey that adding punctuation does make better content, but I will do a test. I think that's a fantastic opportunity in the prompts video to, to look at um, punctuation. Scrolling down, I hope, you, I hope you're sticking with me. <laughs> this is very interesting. I hope publishers will be transparent and let people know I don't want to see a coloring book that says illustration and then it's AI. So it's, it is an ethical gray area, but let's say you did an activity book and you downloaded some activity pages from a website. You included those, maybe you adapted them slightly. Would you say within your book or on your page, these activity pages were downloaded? I've not seen that anywhere at all. And so I think this is much better than downloaded templates and downloading pre-existing content and adapting slightly so you don't get uh, pinged by Amazon. This is actually creating unique content. So I don't really see how much different it is to hiring an illustrator 
briefing them on something and them concepting something out of a piece of work that already exists and just creating something similar. Um, I know the whole kind of mechanical AI element is there and I'm not paying anyone to create the work. That definitely raises some ethical questions, but I won't be flagging personally that this was created with AI. Um, I think people are still very kind of on the fence about AI and looking after content creators, which I completely understand. Um, and people aren't necessarily super acceptive, uh, accepting of AI content at the moment. I think in sort of 12 months time, it would probably be amongst the norm. But for now, my recommendation would be create a good product. And I don't think the consumer needs to know how it was made as long as it's a quality product. Let me know what you think. I, I might be completely wrong. That's just my standpoint. Um, Selt says, does anyone else use Google Slides to format and create the coloring books? So that's an interesting way of doing it for free. I've not tried that myself, but um, yeah, I don't see why not. There's lots of ways to create your interior pages. A few thank yous. Thank you very much. Um, Mad Bulldog comes in with, with a fantastic tip here. He says, when you make your book cover design, start with a CMYK page. Um, so you can start with CMYK or RGB. Uh, CMYK is your kind of print spec. So if you create your cover page in RGB, it won't be true to what you've created. So nice little tip there from Mad Bulldog. I Heart Lo-Fi says, beautiful books. Thank you very much. Uh, Wilson says, I inspire them. Thank you. That's very kind. Um, Oz History says, what size are the books? So generally my coloring books are eight by eight inch. The reason I've done square is it was my choice. I just thought square were quite nice for coloring books. Also, when I started on Mid Journey a few months ago, um, everything was exported in square. So it made sense to make a square book to minimize the amount of uh, kind of unused space. Now you can export in two by three, which is slightly more vertical. So I think moving forward, square or normal uh, book size is absolutely fine. I think, I don't think you'll get away at the moment unless you do multiple coloring images per page with doing anything above eight inches in terms of width. Tila Watt says, can you share the cost of the book? Absolutely. Uh, in the US, 40 pages print cost for black and white interior and a glossy color exterior is $2.15. I tend to sell my coloring books for $7.99 to $8.99. And then how it works is Amazon take 40% of the profit above that $2.15. So if I sell a book for $7.99, that might give me sort of $3.00 maybe slightly less in terms of profit per book sold. And you tend to need a certain amount to, to use for advertising. So say if I get $3 per sale, it might cost me $2 or $2.50 to sell a book. So you might get organic sales along the way, but you need advertising to sell your book or else no one's gonna find you. So you kind of, for me, I need that, I need to price them higher so I can advertise. Uh, Whoopi. Good name. Thanks for the great video. I noticed there are a lot of black gray shading in the images. Are they suitable for coloring? So uh, that's an interesting question. Some of my books have shading. Some of them are just completely outlines only. And it depends on the type of, of book you want to create. Um, especially for kids, I will not include shading, but something for adults where it's quite high detailed, like high detail is one of my prompts that I use sometimes. Um, depending on the genre. Um, and if I want it high detail, I don't mind if there's some shading there. It makes the image look beautiful by itself and you can still colour over it. So yeah, I, I, kind of, I completely see your point. You don't want too much shading in a colouring book, but I think in the high detailed, more intricate, adult focused colouring books, I don't necessarily think it's, it's a bad thing. Kay asks here, very good question. How do we know the images weren't just pulled from Google and already created by someone else? I mean, that would be the biggest AI scam of all time. 
Um, otherwise, this is pretty incredible. As long as it's creating unique content, it's great. Yeah, completely agreed. So what you can do is two ways about it. Export your image, drag it into Google and do a reverse image search. That will search the entire of everything that's listed on Google um, and find that image basically. And normally when you do that, you get zero results, which means it's unique. There's also a copyright checker tool. Um, I'll have to find, find the exact one, but if you Google it, you, I'm sure you'll find it. Um, and you can upload an image in there and it will tell you how alike it is to other images listed on Google. That is fantastic and that completely alleviated my concerns when I uploaded a lot of my colouring pages, um, especially about ones in more kind of popular areas. Um, and I was getting like 11% similar to the nearest thing and the nearest thing was like nothing like it. So uh, it can kind of almost like reverse search and find what prompts are like, what images kind of help to form your your output. Uh, that's really useful just to make sure that, you know, mid journey's not messed up and, and just giving you something that's not unique. So yeah, if, if you like really hot on that kind of stuff, run your images through reverse image search in Google and use the copyright checker as well. John was talking to me on here about the rights that we give to Midjourney and who owns the images. Yes, Midjourney share your rights with you for the images created. So think of them as an illustrator who owns um, whatever they create, but they give it to you and you also own it. So that illustrator can use it however they want in their advertising for their work, if they wanted to do a campaign themselves, they can use it. However, you also own it to go out and create content from it and to sell it. So the way I think about it is I don't really see Mid Journey going out there and creating a coloring book. I don't think it's in their best interest to do that. So I've got no worries with Mid Journey sharing copyright with me. Um, but as long as you're on the higher tier package, you own copyright. Uh, for all assets you create. AI lover, you know, good name for this for this content. Nice video. Maybe you could do one about the process you followed about publishing your science fiction novels, the editing, the cover, etc. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely post one of those uh, about the more kind of high content publishing. Might not be one for everyone, but good shout. That's another idea for a video. Really nice question to discuss here from Niaz. One of the clearest and easiest tutorials to follow, thank you. Is it not required to upscale the images to more than 1024 by 1024 pixels to get crisp results? I did a lot of testing and learning with this. Ideally, yes. Ideally, you'd want a 300 DPI image for print and you'd want it in a much larger size, probably doubled pixels. However, that's not necessarily possible at the moment with mid journey. And so I did testing on different sizes. I started with like a 10 by eight coloring book. Um, and then I did an eight by eight coloring book um, with, with no bleed, so to the edges, and it wasn't crisp enough. What I found, what I found personally for, an, for a good output using mid journey was an eight by eight inch book with a bounding box within it. And so you've, it probably ends up probably being about a six by six inch in terms of the coloring space, but that's about as big as it can go at the moment to get decent results. Um, fingers crossed, moving forward, mid journey will allow you to request it at double the pixel size because uh, 2048 by 2048 pixels will be much crisper. Um, you can upscale within mid journey, but I do find it it changes the, the, the line style um, and for coloring illustrations, it tends to mess them up for me. So I don't upscale anything within mid journey uh, for my coloring books. The Samurai investor would like a prompt guide. No worries. Uh, Myla says, I wonder if they're copyright free. So they're not copyright free. You own the copyright uh, as we mentioned. Ah, Ty Smith, this is exactly what I have done. Good job. No worries. I'm glad that you're doing the same thing. 
<laughs> be great. I won't. Uh, I won't say the swear word there, but they're not a fan of this with spam coloring books. I've come back to him or her here, and I've said, you know, it's it's just the natural flow of things. Once people figured out how to do notebooks, notebooks started getting spammed, and Amazon reacted by um, by adding extra things in there when uploading. Like you have to tick whether um, I can't remember what the thing is, but you have to you have to tick whether it's um, low content. I think it is. So I'm not. I do think maybe moving forward, Amazon might even say, "Was any of this created with AI? Who knows?" And then you tick a tick a box. So I am not worried at all with Amazon being infiltrated with spam coloring books. Um, AI is the future. It's just a way to create content. At the end of the day, we've always had ways to create content, and it the cream will always rise to the top. So it's not only about creating images and bashing out as many as possible. It's about creating a good product. Uh, Brian, are you not concerned about the legal cases? No, not really at the moment. Um, we'll see in terms of what legislations are brought in. Um, but, but yeah, at the moment, we're, we're, we seem to be fine. I want to know if the other users of Midjourney have seen your generated images. If they've searched for them, if they've searched for terms like insect colouring book, you know, they could find my images. But if someone's using Midjourney, I don't understand why they would just take my images when they can create their own in sort of <laughs> five seconds, you know. Wayne, do they have to be 300 DPI for Amazon? Because Midjourney does not do 300 DPI. Uh, no, it doesn't, but ideally in the future, yes. Rupert's asked a couple of questions. What is the page size of your square books? As I mentioned, mostly eight by eight inches. Do you use your own ISBN number or an Amazon one? I use the one, one that Amazon gives you for free because I don't have to buy ISBNs then and I'm not interested in printing them myself and having them to hand out. I'm happy for the moment just selling via Amazon. So yeah, if you're happy selling on Amazon, there's no reason to pay for an ISBN. As is here saying, are you paying the artist whose work you stole? Learn to draw. Great. Well, I've been trying to draw and my drawing is absolutely terrible. And if you bought a book with my drawing, even if I went to lessons, you would want a refund because it would be so bad. Um, and nothing's been stolen, nothing's been plagiarised. It's the same sort of thing as someone using a song for inspiration, but changing so much of the song so it's not like the original. A uh, question from Kenny here. Once you create a character using the AI, can you upload that character and have the AI make changes? This would be really useful if you wanted to do like a kid's coloring book or sorry, a kid's storybook uh, following a journey of, of a single character, or if you wanted to make a colouring book around a specific character that you've created. So there are ways to use your image as a base for the prompts. So you can upload an image and then say, say if it was an image of, of Mario, for example, even though you wouldn't do that for copyright reasons, but you upload Mario and then your prompt might be, um, on a spaceship it will likely give you some versions of your upload that are similar but i don't think at the moment you can kind of like request it to be put in different poses uh, it's not that specific because it will still have to take things elsewhere and merge them together so there might be opportunities moving forward where you upload your character and then you know, even just do a stick drawing of the pose. That might be something that you can test and see if it works. Um, but yeah, the AI is always evolving. And if that can work in the future, that's going to be huge, um, especially with children's books. And then even I, who can't draw, could, could make a character, pay an artist, for example, to make a character and then draw stick drawings of what it's doing. Uh, so that's, that's quite an interesting topic. There's one here, can you do puzzle books using AI? So at the moment, I've not figured out a way to do puzzle books. However, 
chat GPT, which has kind of gone viral recently, you could, for example, ask chat GPT to give you 20 word search question and answers around a certain topic um, or crossword questions and answers. So puzzle type prompts absolutely work fine in chat GPT and similar. But in terms of create asking um, mid journey and similar to create crosswords for you, that doesn't work at the moment. Yeah, always going to get comments like nefs. <laughs> the thing with AI, like people, some people don't understand it and they just think it's you're just stealing. Um, some people think it's infringing on copyright, which it's not. So, yeah, it's it's just ride the wave and let's see what happens with with AI in the future. How many pages do you design for one coloring book? I kind of vary between 40 and let's let's say 40 is my standard go to in terms of uh, original illustrations to color I say illustrations original prompt exports to to color so I would tend to have 40 images uh, which is 80 pages because you want a blank page uh, on the opposite so there's no bleed through or to try and uh, prevent bleed through so yeah generally 40 original mid-journey created designs is what I would have per coloring book. But if you've got a topic that's super hot, say if you're doing like a football coloring book, you could do like a hundred. There's no reasons why not. Books with Mariel. Thank you for the, the comment and the, the subscription. I'm curious to see how your experience in writing high content fiction has shaped how you publish and market your low and medium content books. Um, she mentions Romney from The Life Graduate. Uh, left me a comment and it made me smile. That's nice. Yeah, he's a he seems like a really nice guy. Um, the thing that I've learned most from high content, apart from the years and years and years it took to write books, um, is so much about the advertising and marketing aspect. It's your front cover is super important, probably the most important thing in today's age. Probably more important than the the quality of the writing itself, which is quite sad. Um, I'm talking from a kind of self-publishing aspect here. Um, the blurb is very important to hook people and it's like your sales copy, uh, your opportunity to sell it. The A plus content that I've started creating for everything, that's just an extra area to do image ads for, for people. So another way to sell to them. Um, and I've learned a lot about Amazon ads through the kind of targeting uh, keywords, the product targeting uh, with, with my high content books. So I've also kind of learned that for me at the moment, I've released, I've released four full length books that was completely written by me. The covers were completely created by me and my partner, um, all completely original. A book might take a year to make and a coloring book that I make in, in a day sells more in uh, two months than my book sell in five years. So the thing that I've learned more, I think about uh, the kind of low and medium content is for me, yes, I want to create a good product, but I'm trying to find things that sell. Whereas with my high content and my, my dystopian fiction that I write, um, that's almost like a passion project. And I don't necessarily focus so much on sales on that. I, I more kind of see that as a uh, creative output. Whereas my low content books, my medium content books, that's more about finding a hot niche, creating a product and getting out there and selling. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, I do this to try and make some money. Um, let's see if, if it happens. Eh? Oh, here we go. Here's Romney, um, the life graduate. If you don't follow him, uh, he's one of the inspirations for me starting this channel so make sure you go follow him he, he's fantastic he, he does uh, more regular updates than i do um and he says congratulations on commencing your channel thank you very much uh, excellent video on your journey thank you very much romney and that's it that's gone through all the questions that you had some trolling comments um some thank yous and well dones which are always appreciated and yeah if you have any more comments about ai what you think the future will look like, um, especially if you have any ideas of what videos you want me to make, because I'm still finding my feet as a content creator. But 
it is amazing to have you all here. Thank you so much for subscribing, for liking, for watching the videos. It means so, so much to me. And until the next one, have fun publishing.